currently right now in the NBA, there's a three, three parts to the NBA retirement plan. Number one, they get a pension. So if you, if you do three, three years with the NBA, uh, you're vested after three years of service. And I believe for every, you know, uh, every, uh, after 10 seasons and you earn the maximum benefit allowed by law, which is 195. So they're able to have a pension from the NBA. The other pa- uh, uh, part of that is a 401k. But the maximum you can put inside a 401k is $23,000 a year. So if you're making tens of millions of dollars a year, brother, and you can only put in $23,000 in your 401k, of course the NBA is going to match it. So take advantage of the match. I don't know how much it's going to be worth to you in terms of what your income used to be as a player versus what it's going to be when you're 59 and a half, 60 years old. But at least you can maximize the 401k. Then they have annuity that provides a monthly income after retirement until the player turns 50 years old. By the way, none of these plans, whether pension, 401k annuity, in my opinion, is designed to replace your income as a professional athlete. You have to do that with your own personal finance, your own endorsements, your own corporations, your own investments to make sure you take care of you. So the financial literacy conversation is not being had at a college level. It's definitely not being had with these players going from high school when you're in in college and and, and then into the pros. So if you're going to take financial advice, just like I did in, in the military, don't take advice from the broke person in the locker room. And by the way, just because they make a lot of money doesn't mean they're rich, or in this case, wealthy. If you have a lot more money than what you're spending, that to me is wealth, that's confidence, that's peace, that's strength, that's confidence. But if you're making 10 million a year, 20 million a year, and you're spending more than that, let's say for example, I'm making 10 million a year, but I'm spending 12, I'm making 10 million a year, I'm spending 15, that's a bad recipe for success. If you find yourself in that type of situation, or you don't have somebody in your corner, in your entourage, that's not telling you right from wrong, then you need to find a different entourage. You need to look at the right person in the face, your boss, in this case, you. Mm-hmm. You're the boss as a professional athlete. Look yourself in the face and ask myself, what type of my lifestyle do I want to reduce after I get done playing the game? If it's zero, then you better be spending less while you're on the platform because when you're off the platform, you, bet, you better maximize. And on top of that, you need to make sure you have the right relationships on the platform before you get off the platform because people want to get together with you and do business with you and like you, not because of you as a professional athlete. They want to appreciate you and value you and, appreci- and, and, and do business with you because you are a good person, not because you're an athlete. Because after you're done, you don't want to be looked upon as a has-been. You want to be looked upon as somebody with relationships, a sincere desire, and genuine desire, an authentic person that wants to help people out. So that's what I would say to a lot of these professional athletes out there. Here's the income tax. Now, in addition to you paying your federal income tax, this is the income tax you have to pay to earn income in California. So if you look there to the bottom left of the screen, if you earn between 350 and 418, you have to pay a progressive income tax, right? Oh yeah, but basically it's a bottom line, it's a progressive income tax all the way, but you gotta pay even more tax if you make between 60 and 80,000 to 349. And by the way, if you look at this, what do you think they're trying to tax the most? They're trying to tax the rich the most in California. Yeah. And what are the rich doing in California? Are they staying or are they leaving? They're leaving immediately. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, if you make between 418 and 698, they've taxed you another 11.3% on federal income tax. If you're making 698, basically, if you're a millionaire, or in this case, an NBA player, you're paying 12.3%. If you're, if you're single, on, uh, or married fire, married fire and separately, on income taxes there in the state of California. So lots of taxes there in the state of California, 12.3%. So if you had a 37 point, uh, 37.5% income tax and you, make another, uh, you have to pay another 12% because you're a millionaire in, in California, that's what? That's 49%. 50% of what you earn as a millionaire in California, half is but, gone. But okay, now would, would you say, uh, based on what you've seen in your experience, would you say this is an overall every single sport or to NBA uh, every players being affected by this, or is it just specific players? Like for example, Draymond Green, as of 2024, he's been fined approximately $2.2 million in various you know, uh, technical fouls and on-court uh, altercations, which if you accumulate these fines, it's around 173 technical fouls and several suspensions. And from those six suspensions, obviously it's cost him a crap ton of money. Uh, his most recent suspension involved a five-day uh, game ban for an altercation with Rudy Gobert, Gobert, which alone resulted in a loss of seven hundred, rounded up seven hundred and seventy thousand, seven hundred and seventy thousand dollars in salary. So, is it and the NBA's fault, or is it each player's and their and the way they choose to work within the NBA and the way they play the game? I think that's the, that. Brought, I think the right answer is the last one you put up. Yeah. It's a Draymond Green issue. Yeah. Nobody told you to argue with her. Nobody told you to get in a fight with Andrew Gober. Nobody told you to get fined. 
You're complaining about it now because you're getting caught. You're getting complaining about it because they're digging in your pocket. The NBA is trying to incentivize you to behave. To be better. To be better and yeah. set a better example for the people that are watching the game of basketball. Yeah. The NBA. By the way, let's look at our screen here real quick. Draymond Green gets paid $22 million this year and $24 million next year in the NBA. Now, granted, they're paid as employees. Half of that has gone in taxes. Sadly, ain't it crazy? Yeah. But it's not like the NBA is not trying to take care of you. This is a decent, look, Stephen Curry's making $51 million. And if you look at another, um, if you look here at our, our, our hometown uh, Dallas uh, players, nobody on the Dallas roster is getting paid 50 mil. Luka Doncic is the 16th highest paid player in the league, the number one paid player in the Dallas Mavericks. He's making $40 million a year. Kyrie, 37. The bench player, I don't know who signed a minimum contract here. Even the bench player, Alex Fudge, I guess, 135, <laughs> 212, 315, to be a bench player, to be a practice player. A.J. Dawson, all the way at the bench, a million dollars a year. Jaden Hardy, 1.7. JaVale McGee. These guys, so not everybody in the NBA is making a lot of money. One, let's say well, one-third of the roster is in, in a 10 million and above, but everybody else in a multi-millions. By the way, not too shabby, by the way. Yeah. It's a blessing and an honor. In my, in my opinion, it's a gift from above to be a professional athlete. But once you make it to the league, remember, that's not your platform. That's the NBA's platform. Yeah. It's not your platform in the NFL. It's the NFL's platform. So you have to abide by the rules of the platform that is there to maximize every bit of opportunity for everybody to make money. If you think you're so good at it, create your own league. If you think you're so good at it, create your own ways of uh, earning income and set policies or rules and regulations that cause people to operate in a way that people long-term can make money. L last thing I, I want to show you. The NBA foresees... Here's the crazy part. You, you think the NBA is not trying to get, help the guys out? Uh, the NBA foresees, if you look at my screen one more time, NBA foresees that the next wave of players is going to be making $100 million annual salary. $100 million annual salary by 2029. Crazy, right? Why do you think that is? Well, because the league is just getting bigger and broader and yeah. getting, more, getting more wealthier and wealthier. And they're big. Salute, salute to them. So in other words, if the cap is high, every other player, because right now the average NBA player today, if you factor in all the salaries, the average NBA player is making $10 million a year. Yeah. Right? Of course, the bottom line players make a million dollars. The first time, by the way, in the history of the NBA, minimum income to be on an NBA roster is a million dollar income. But because you get paid as an employee, half of that has gone in taxes, 3% has gone to your agent. And so you have to really be smart with your finances and don't get caught up into the entourage. We'll do a clip because I watched this uh, clip of uh, Michael Vick. And he was asked because, you know, obviously he, he, his career was cut short because of dogs and fighting and all that type of stuff. But uh, Vlad was asking him a question about finances, as asking a question about money. And Michael Vick says, I don't value money. I value respect and I value loyalty. But, he, and, and that's why he has an entourage. But here's my thing. If, they're, if they really respect you and they're really loyal to you, regardless if you have money or not, they should follow you. Hmm. It's not because you can feed them, not because you can pay them. Not because, yeah. you, you don't help them out by just feeding them something for free. You, you, you help people by, by giving them some cash to start a seed capital so they can build something, they can earn something, so therefore they're not dependent upon you. If you think you're getting people to respect you and be loyal to because you pay for their bills, you pay for the food when they're around you, it's, to me, in my opinion, that's, that's buying friendships. And by the way, a lot of people don't understand that uh, mentality, but at the end of the day, when you've got nothing to give them in terms of finances, how quickly will they depart from you? That's the million dollar question. That's a deeper question to be asked. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.